I just gotta make sure y'all cause like I said there was a little thing that popped up it said like restriction or something I was like whoa whoa Looks like we're okay. <laughs> y'all, let me see. Hopefully y'all are coming on in. I see five people are watching. Y'all, sometimes it takes a little while, but like I said, I had that pop-up that said restriction. Looks like we're good. Okay, it looks like we're good, y'all. I apologize. Like I said, it said that I had like a restriction. I was like, wait, what? So, okay. Okie dokie. Yeah, we're good, y'all. We are good to go. Whoo! Thank goodness. Good morning, y'all. Let me just take a little sippy sip. Okay, so I'm going to make another mesh wreath. I know two mesh wreaths in one week. Like, wait, what? <laughs> um, But I still have some of these home sweet home signs now these were exclusive to the january 2023 box if i'm not mistaken or december 2022 uh deluxe wreath supply box but there are plenty of home sweet home signs you can find on deco exchange um i just pulled this one because this one it happens to be my favorite one so we're gonna use this one I am going to be using some of my favorite mesh. Y'all, if you ever... Y'all, you've seen me use this mesh a hundred times, probably. A million times. But this is my favorite one. Write this down. I don't know when it's going to come back in stock. But it's RY830254. This is my favorite mesh. It's got the burlap and the cream running through it. I absolutely love this mesh. I will say I did pre-cut some of the mesh already. I did pre-cut my ruffles. So that's going to save us a little bit of time. But um, I'm going to use some of the... So there was an exclusive 60919 with the red and the green and the white. Some red 60919 and some white 60919. And then I have my favorite flower. Y'all geraniums are my absolute favorite flower during the summer uh i was just at disney i know you're probably like goodness gracious he's gonna stop talking about disney anytime soon no because i absolutely love disney um and i was at saratoga springs and they had the huge huge planters outside of the carriage house and they were just full of red geraniums that looked absolutely beautiful i'm gonna y'all it was mickey red geraniums So, really, really pretty. But all I'm doing is I am going to use some 10-inch mesh. Y'all, I am wearing a Mickey shirt. This poor shirt's been run through the ringer, but it's okay. Um, so, we're going to come on in with our 10-inch mesh. And I'm going to make eight poofs on this inner ring. So, I am using a wreath frame from the at-home store. 
These, like I said yesterday, I used them yesterday, but they are my favorite. They are elevated. They're slightly elevated. So, um, I love to use these wreath frames, these wreath forms. So, we're going to add, I'm going to try and make sure I get eight poofs out of the inner ring. So we had like a little bit of, like I tried to go, I hit the thing that said, um, make new live one. And it gave me like a restriction, like YouTube. And I was like, wait, what? So, and then I went back out and I came back in. And I was like, okay, well, let me try it again. And the restriction thing wasn't there anymore. So, thankfully, we're able to go live here on the YouTube, y'all. So, here we go. I've got eight poofs. I did use 10 inch mesh. You can use 21 inch mesh. You can use 10 inch mesh, whichever one you want. Um, I've been trying to clear out some remnant pieces, some rolls that have a little bit on it, rolls that have not a lot on it, but um, yeah. Okay, so this is gonna be our sign, our focal point, along with the red geraniums. I did pre-cut my mesh, okay? I did, I did pre-cut it. It is at 24 inches long, y'all, 24 inches long. We're going to make, so I'll show this part, y'all, and then I'll move the camera back up. But all I do is go once, twice, right? So once, twice, and then three times a lady, okay? And I need 16 pieces for the outer ring. So on your wreath frames like this, you have the inner and you have an outer. So this is the inner where my left finger is, and this is the out of where my right finger is. Love when you're on and everyone else has gone to lunch, peace and quiet. Yep, it's perfect, y'all. So coming on in, you couldn't find the live, well th thankfully you found us now. If you're in the How to Make Reads group, I have a lady over there, she said, please don't send me any more texts. I'm like, well honey, the only way you're not going to get text messages, well I haven't even sent text messages, I just tag at everyone. Okay, so going around. But y'all come on in and join us. We're making a geranium half home sweet home wreath. Y'all know geraniums are my favorite. If you don't, if you don't know, you're gonna know my geraniums are my favorite summer flower. I absolutely love geraniums. And then you mix it with some of the ribbons I chose. Yes, please. Y'all see that little mini dot ribbon right there? Yes, please. So I do love this uh, horizontal stripe mesh. This is one of my favorites. It's nice and thick. It's actually perfect for those flower board wreaths. If you make the flowers, it's perfect for that. Um, but also, my other favorite is the breeze mesh.
Christmas. Well, it's almost time to start Christmas, y'all. Again. Some of y'all are like, I just packed away my Christmas tree. It's okay. Y'all, one thing I learned, um, and my friend Jen taught me this. She keeps her Christmas tree out all year. Okay? She keeps her Christmas tree out all year. And what she does with that Christmas tree, like, I was like, whoa, that's kind of smart. Y'all, she puts all of her picks and her florals in the Christmas tree instead of, like, buckets or containers. I was like, oh, oh. So everything's just in the Christmas tree. So I was like, okay. I would have never thought to have done that. So keep your Christmas tree up all year and you just stick all the picks and florals and stuff in it. Instead of having 29,000 buckets like I do. Does it work for everybody? No, but I mean, if you want to try it, you definitely can. Yeah, so definitely people are getting ready for Christmas, y'all, because Damon did post that the pink Santas are selling again. Um, what else? That was like a Christmas tractor sign, I think, that sold. What else? And I think there's another one. Good morning, y'all. Y'all, thanks for hanging out with me today. Yeah, so I didn't realize, like, to put that in the Christmas... To put your floral stems in the Christmas tree, I was like, that's smart. Okay. So I put 16 ruffles on the outer ring. Okay, I have 16. This is lucky number 16. Right here that we're adding in. And then we're going to add our ruffles into our inner ring as well. And I just kept them the same. So I needed a total of 24 cuts of mesh. Yeah, 6 times 4 is 24. I do untie my twist ties. Good morning. So y'all y'all come on in and join us. Join in on the fun. I sold a fiesta. I sold one of my fiesta reefs last night. So I think so it's funny, I live in Texas, y'all. And I if you've ever followed me on my Facebook page, Designs by Jordan, um Y'all know I live in Texas, right? Hey Debbie Romero. So I live in Texas, and I make fiesta wreaths for fiesta season in San Antonio, or Cinco de Mayo. I have sold both of my really nice over-the-top fiesta wreaths, and neither one of them is going to Texas. It's not staying in Texas. One of them is going to Oregon, and then the other one I think is going to California. So... If you've ever watched me live, you realize, like, Jordan, sometimes you go on super late at night, right? Well, I learned that a lot of my followers are from um, on the West Coast. So, I adjust my live time so that way they can sit down and watch me live in California or Oregon, wherever they might be. So I think that was actually pretty fun. I was like, I was like, wow, I was like neither one of these is going to Texas homes. Good morning, good morning. So adding all of our ruffles in. Y'all know me, I love to establish a pattern. So I usually start off with um, just on one end and then I just go down that line. Normally, when I'm adding my um, mesh, when I'm pulling my mesh, like I'll roll it out 
and I'll lay them in how I want them to to be on the wreath so and that way I can establish that pattern of which way I want them to go okay so I do use the evergreen bases because there's a little bit more places to add um, florals in okay so this one was an at-home base I did not pay these on I did not buy these on sale I paid the full price but still this was a five dollar base and I will pay five dollars for a base all day every day okay so next I'm going to add my sign now for my design for my eye this has always been my foolproof like a foolproof y'all this recipe um I have done for a few years. I'm not gonna lie. I've done this recipe for for quite a few years. Um, I've changed a little bit of it, but I've kind of kept the same aspect of it. I always put a sign to my left hand side and my bow to my right hand side. That's where I like to put my bow. Okay, so I always put a sign to the left or a bow to the right sometimes i'll switch it where i'll put the sign to the right and the bow to the left so it doesn't really matter um i think today i want to you know what i think we're going to change it a little bit y'all let's let's change it let's put it to my right and then we'll put my bow to the left okay so we are going to need some pipe cleaners Where'd my staple gun go? There it is. So I am going to staple this in. Okay. So should we do the sign to the right or should we do the sign to the left? What do y'all think? What do y'all... What do y'all think? I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'll give it a little bit for y'all to answer. Sign to the right or to the to the right or to the left. Hmm. 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 So I'll give you a little bit. I'll open up my ribbons. Because once I attach my bow, my sign, it'll be time to add my ribbons. Love this fancy penny, y'all. I've got a lot of fancy penny in this design. My favorite ribbon. There we go. To the right. Looks like the right is winning by two right now. Three. Okay. Three boat to the right. And one to the left. So it looks like the right one. Yeah, I have four votes total. One to the left, three to the right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our sign right here to the um, right. Oh, see, we've got two to the left. You know, it's, a close, it's a close call. So, for me, uh, this is something I learned from Megan, and I never thought of it, but she adds glue to her signs. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some glue to our um, sign right here. And I do use the Gorilla Glue, um, the Gorilla brand glue. I just add a little bit of glue. Well, it kind of looks like a lot of glue, but we're gonna add this right in here. Okay, I'm gonna snag that mesh a little bit. We're gonna run our pipe cleaner through. Right? So that's one thing I did learn from Megan, and you know, it kind of helps like 
you're committing to it, y'all. It's okay, Laura. Next time we'll we'll put the sign to the left. We'll make a wreath just for Laura next time, y'all. Y'all, I love Laura. I've met her in person multiple times, and she's just the sweetest. It's crazy, like now, like I think about it, y'all, and you know, a lot of stuff has changed, like in the past, like five years, six years, um, as far as like community and things like that. I never would have thought that there'd be like conventions where wreath makers and crafters and fake bakers all get together and they hang out and, and do stuff. I would have never thought that that would happen, especially because I know like when I was first starting out, there wasn't any of that. Right? There was none of that. None of that fun, like the camaraderie, or as Megan calls it, com commandeery. Um, so, definitely, things have definitely changed, and I I don't think we should ever go back. Right, y'all? Right. I used um, an 18 inch frame. That's what I used. I used an 18 inch um, evergreen base. Okay, so now we're going to make our bow. And I'm going to start with my one and a half inchers. And then my. Um, actually, I need to pull this one inch ribbon. I absolutely love this um, ferris silk ribbon if y'all know i do love designer ribbons y'all and i do love to mix inexpensive ribbons so ferris silk released satin ribbons um and they're absolutely affordable i love that but so i love mixing all of this together like these are all affordable options these are all under seven eight dollars a roll some of them are actually i think this one was like but this one's like four ninety five, so five dollars a roll. Once you um, once you use like a fifty yard roll, like this one, cabana stripe, absolutely great. If you don't have a cabana stripe in your arsenal, definitely, definitely, you need to buy some. Okay, so I do love mixing my affordable options with some of my designer options, like my um, my mini dots right here. So, we're going to make my bow, and I'm going to start with a tail going up, and make my loop, Let's see, I think that's about 9 inches, yes, 9 inch loop, now while we don't carry fair silk at deco, um, we do carry other brands, and we do carry one of our favorite companies, Ribbon, um, D. Stevens, when it comes in, y'all. When it comes in, you got to act fast because Megan gets on that bleep bleep, and she's like, it's gone. I'm like, but I didn't get any. So starting off with a tail again, and then we're going to do two 10-inch loops so i love mixing the affordable ribbons with those designer ribbons because y'all when i first started out like i couldn't afford those there was one store that i knew sold the um designer ribbons and i longed to be able to afford them y'all i longed to afford those ribbons i'm like one day, one day, one day I'll afford those ribbons. Um, so, um, I would see their ribbons in store and I'm like, $60, that's a lot. $50, that's a lot. $30 was a lot back, back in the days. Um, so I would try and find like dupes. That is one thing like I kind of became known for because I would find me a good dupe of some ribbons. 
And I would tell like all my friends, like, y'all, this looks just like the D. Stevens ribbon, yada, yada, yada. Right? But like I knew that I didn't I couldn't afford those. And now, like back then, the the patterns you could normally find were stripes, polka dots, um ugly pardon my French y'all, ugly satins. Those satin ribbons that would just wrinkle in your hands and they weren't there, they weren't very pretty. So um yeah, but a lot has definitely changed over the past few years. And I'm very happy about it. I am not complaining. But I love mixing in. So if I splurged um, with that designer ribbon, like I would, I would choose a pattern that I knew I was going to use a lot of. So like majority of the time it was like a black and white. And I'm like, if it's a chevron or a stripe or something or a polka dot, I want to make sure that ribbon stretches everywhere. So what I would do is I would just quite literally put it in my bow as like a little strip. And I kept, I was doing that for a while. Y'all look how pretty this is. I love that. I wish there was a geranium print ribbon. I think there needs to be a geranium print ribbon. Um, and so I did that for a while until someone actually like, they kind of called me out and they're like, Jordan, how do you have that ribbon in every single wreath? And I was like, well, what do you mean? They're like, and they were like, you've added that ribbon like in eight or seven wreaths. I was like, well, fun fact is I just add a little strip of it. They're like a strip and they're like, I was like, yeah, you just add a little strip of that ribbon to it. And they're like, show me. So I sent them a picture. I was like, do you see this ribbon? I was like, do you see that there's any loops or anything with it? And they're like, no. I was like, exactly. It's literally just a strip. Like I would add like a 13, 14 inch strip of ribbon, y'all. Like that would, that would be it. That was the extent of me adding that ribbon into um, my wreath. Hence why I could stretch that one roll of ribbon to all of these designs like especially like this red and white one you know i can i can make this roll stretch probably to if i did that i could probably make a good seven or eight designs out of it out of that one roll kind of matching these up making sure they're about the same size yes Now, I do make my bows by hand, y'all. So, um, I don't think I'm going to use the two and a half inch. I'm going to use the four inch. Okay, so here, I'll show y'all exactly what I mean. So, if I bought a ribbon like this, and let's just say... Um, yeah, I'm still holding all of it together. Let's just say I had this, I had this ribbon and I only wanted a little bit of it. This is quite literally what I would do. Now it would depend on the size of my bow, but I would literally just make a, cut a strip out. So this strip right here is what, 22 inches? Yeah, 22 inches. So I would just make a strip just like this, mix that in. Kind of blends in with all of my tails, right? So we've got that. And then I would back it with something that I knew I was going to need some, like some of this foreign ribbon. But it wouldn't have been this foreign ribbon. I would have chosen something else. So that's how I would make my designer ribbon stretch so just a little history lesson from Jordan I'm 
Now I look at six dollar ribbon. I'm like, ooh, yay, perfect. That's a good price. <laughs> but I know not everyone can afford that. So I always try and give you a little bit of tips and tricks here and there of what worked for me when I first started out. And that was one of them, y'all. That was one of my little tricks that I used to do. And I think we I think her name was Kristen. I think we're still friends on Facebook. But um she was like, How do you get your wreath? How do you get your bow like that? I was like, I just add a strip of it. So y'all, oh, this is nice, big, and juicy. Look how pretty that is, y'all. Really, really pretty. So I do got my tails coming down. Oh, this is pretty, y'all. Make that equal. Because that's going to hug that sign right there. I'm not going to lie, my hand was going a little numb holding that. Happens every once in a while, y'all. I still have, um, actually I can show y'all one of the very first, because I have it right down here. I still have pieces of it. Well, this is actually still on the roll, but this was one of my very first um, ribbons, designer ribbons. Y'all, I do keep it around because it, it reminds me kind of like where I came from. You know, always wanted to long to buy a designer ribbon, and I think I spent like sixty dollars on this roll of ribbon, and it was a ten yard roll. So now I figure it out. Like that really wasn't that bad, but when you're just beginning or you're in the game for a few years. You're like, oh my gosh. So I had bought this for my Christmas tree. Because I've always loved the word believe. Um, and I love Christmas. So this was a D. Stevens. Um, Mary Englebright um, collaboration that they did years ago. So I do keep this one around, y'all. I do keep it around. Um, she kind of hangs out. She gets moved every once in a while. And then I'm like, oh, no, can't get rid of her. So yeah, that's one of my very first rolls of designer ribbon because it was a D. Stevens. And the thing, the the ends of it have popped off, but okay. So we're gonna come off to the left hand side of that sign. So it's gonna hug that right there. Is there a correlation between the size of wreath frame and the size of the loops in the ribbon? Mm, no. I just do what makes me happy. Mary, um, honestly, if I like it, I'm gonna do it. If I don't like it, I will, I will quite literally remake the bow. So, the answer for me is gonna be no. Now, sometimes, like if you saw yesterday's wreath, so that was going to be March um, 12th design that we did here. Uh, we did a really big bow, and that was kind of our focal point of our of our wreath. So um, I don't normally sit here and try and figure out like. Well, is this going to be a 12-inch bow, or is this going to be a 13-inch bow? No, I don't. I don't do any of that, y'all. No, I really don't. Okay. So you see what I did there? I used some of those tinsel ties. Um, and help secure it just a little bit more. 
You just bought your first designer ribbon last week. Awesome. What'd you get? Tell us, tell us, tell us. Because we all love ribbon here, right, y'all? We love ribbon. And y'all, I'm just going to say this. Wreath makers that are starting now, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all have it so... Y'all are so lucky. Y'all have people that make wreath attachments. Y'all have people that make um, homemade signs. We didn't have any of that, y'all. Like, we did not have none of that good stuff. None of this good stuff that's out there on the market right now, we did not have. So, um, we would have to, like... I really think that's where DIYers really strived because we had to we had to make our own stuff we couldn't just go to walmart or hobby lobby or um craft store and find a cute sign where we're like oh we're gonna put that in a wreath no we have to be like strategic we're like is that gonna work is this like well i want i need a home sweet home sign i gotta get those bubble letters from hobby lobby Or we would have to hand paint some. And then, of course, when I was starting out, y'all, I didn't know. I didn't know trademark rules. I didn't know copyright. Um, things like that. Y'all, I used to actually. And you know, when you know better, you do better, right? That's always, that's always stuck with me through the years with people. So, um... I actually, there's a sign that I painted for a birthday party wreath that someone was having for their, I think he was going to be like two or one or two. Y'all, I done didn't paint a whole Curious George sign. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I painted a Curious George sign. So, you know, like the saying is, when you know better, you do better. And now I don't do that, right? So, um, definitely don't recommend it because you will probably end up getting caught. You'll get caught, y'all. Just because you don't think you're going to get caught doesn't mean you're not going to get caught because you'll probably end up getting caught. So, like I said, when you know better, you do better. And now I definitely do better because I do not have I don't design with um, trademarked items at all. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in some ribbon tails. These are going to be 13 inches long. So there's a total of 16 spots that I need mesh uh, ribbon on. So I'm going to cut four of each color. Yeah, yeah. I think at one point, like we all have done it. Um, whether it's been Dallas Cowboys, I know we. I live in Texas, so Dallas Cowboys was always a number one choice. No, it's not my number one choice. <laughs> um, so yeah. The information that is out there now, I mean, it may have always been there, but when you're young and you're just starting out, you're like, eh, whatever, they're not going to catch me. Um, trust me, y'all, they will catch you. They will catch you. Don't think that you're invincible because you're not. They pay people, y'all. They, as in, like... Walt Disney and Dr. Seuss and um, place uh, families like that, they pay people to quite literally scour the internet. They pay them to scour Etsy. You know, the internet, just to find someone that's in violation and then you get that nice cease and so their first warning is going to be a nice cease and desist letter right and you kind of have to like okay well you know 
that's their that's their fun way um, of telling you mm -mm, that you can't do that. You can't do that's a no no. And then if you don't pay attention, it goes up even further. Um, and then ultimately, um, I've seen we've seen stories of people who have um, been raided for selling trademarked goods. So yeah, don't be don't be those people though. Don't don't do it, friends. It's not worth it. So another lesson of the day, y'all. I mean, I think, like I said, the whole, um, those laws have been there forever, y'all. But like someone said, social media did change it. Um, but they've always been there. Like you can't sell, um, stuff like that. So they have always been there. Um, people have not followed them, but... Um, they've always been there. So that's always one thing to point out that they have always been there. But now, now there's people that, you know, like guide you and teach you like, nope, don't do this. Don't do that. Okay, so we're going to add in our ribbon tails. I do untwist my tie. So I'm going to do the Swiss dot. because it's going to bother me already. Hold on, y'all. This is normally what I do. Why I didn't do this to begin with. Beats me. Yeah, even, um, I know people that have had to pay money to, corporations because they sold stuff. So we're adding in this ribbon. These are 13 inch ribbon tails, really, uh, 13 inch ribbon tails have always been my go-to when I first started out 14 inches was a little too long and 12 inches was a little too short so I met in the middle and I did 13 um, that's been that's kind of been my foolproof length because it peaks out just enough I'll tell y'all it peaks out plenty um, but I do love my ribbon tails to be 13 inches. Occasionally, I, depending on the wreath, 
I might have to use a 12 or 14, but for a majority of the um, majority of the wreaths that I make, 13 inches is my go-to. Okay, so just adding these in, these are just, all, now these are all on the outer ring. I am adding them on the outer ring. So that's how I figured out, like, I need to know how many um, tails I needed. And the way I figured that out is how many ruffles I added into the outer ring. So I knew I added 16, so I usually try and um, make sure I have four of each ribbon for that. I love this, y'all. I love this, and I cannot wait to add those red geraniums. That's what I'm excited about. Y'all, and it's just not like NFL teams or the Grinch. Y'all, it's also like Frozen and Rudolph and um, the Peanuts. Oh, yep, I love how this has come out so far. So there we go, we've got our bow. And now I'm gonna add some greenery first. My favorite bush. This is the 13292BU9 bush. This is one of our favorite greeneries. So this I'm going to cut up and I'm going to put this in every other tie on the outer ring. Okay. Nightmare Before Christmas. The Adams Family. So yeah. The list goes on y'all. Any scene that you see on TV or movies that's all, that all falls in the same boat, y'all, unfortunately. So we're adding this in, I'm adding some hot glue. And so many times people ask, where are you adding this directly? I'm making sure I'm getting some of that pine greenery. I want to make sure I get that pine. So now the way it actually is working is that I put that piece of greenery in the ties where the one and a half inch ribbon is. So. Uh, I had those geraniums sitting there and I was like, I was kind of going through my phone and I was like, I haven't done a geranium design this year yet. So I opted, I have done a mushroom with these same colors, but I want to do just a red geranium. And red's such a bold, pretty color. I do love the color red. People have said I look good in the color red. And I used to wear red religiously until um, I think I was in eighth grade and the janitor yes the janitor a grown adult you know i'm eighth grade so what's what i'm what 14 maybe decided to take it upon himself and call me kool-aid so yeah i kind of stopped wearing red for a while and then i got a job at the grocery store and their uniform was red so i had to wear red So, fun fact, Jordan does like the color red, but stopped wearing it because of a janitor. 
This is, I believe, a 10 inch sign. Yeah, these are 10 inches. This is a 10 inch sign. Okay. So what did I do? There they are. I'm going to bring in my Schnazzy 60919. And I think I'm not going to use the red one because I have some red, the red geraniums. But I am going to use the red and the green one. So the red and the green one, I think Deco had exclusively made. Um, this is one of the newer ones. It's a Christmas one. But, well, the colors are more spring-like. For Christmas, I always expect something to have some pine in it. So. Yeah, and then of course, because kids saw an adult doing it, they're like, oh, it's okay for me to do it too. So yeah, I stopped wearing red for a while. I did not like the color red. I mean, I've always been, um, I've always been a big kid. So. So I'm going to use the cream and that red and green one. Fluff this out, y'all know. Don't just stick that in there the way it looks. Always fluff it out and make it look pretty. When I started out at the grocery store, did you immediately? No. Um, I used to be a stalker. Um, so, like, I would stalk the grocery shelves, y'all, or. I used to work the evening shift, so it would be like, um, you were a stalker, but you were in charge of like, at the night shift was to make sure that the store looked good, clean, um, sweep, mop, all that stuff. Um, I remember the manager, she did not, she did not like me very much either, um, because I knew she was kind of a joke. She she picked and she chose who, um, she who she really liked. Of course, she had her favorites. And one day she threw a broom at me. Like she didn't throw the broom at me, but she threw like the handle. Like he, some guy was uh, sweeping, and she y'all like I'm telling you like, it's funny like, people always talk about. Like their experiences and I'm like, y'all, if I could tell about experiences at the grocery store, I got some. <laughs> um, and so like, like imagine like this is the broom and it was like he was holding on to it. So she went like that. So she took it and then she went like here, like so she kind of like threw it like the pole at me. And I was like, she's like, here, you sweep. And I was like, okay, I was facing, but whatever. And then I, um started talking with you know of course when you work in a grocery store you end up making friends and stuff like that so i um kind of befriended one of the cashiers her name was jessica and i had already been a cashier before at a previous grocery store so she's like you know how to do this and i was like yeah so they were looking for cashiers and then they um, she told them, they're like, well, Jordan knows how to do it. They're like, what? And they're, she's like, yeah, she's like, he's, he's always been helpful when I'm around. So they moved me from a stalker to a cashier. And I was like, super ecstatic. I was like, heck yeah. Um, and then from there, I moved up to the scanning office, which is probably... One of the, um, I don't want to say more formal positions, but, um, I went from there 
from from cashier i cashiered for a few years then they added me to then they moved me to the scanning office which is the um office where uh you receive and you the trucks and the orders and you essentially you're the person in charge of pricing right which sometimes can be fun and sometimes it can be your your biggest pain in the you know what so um what is the number on the greenery bush again one three two nine two b u nine let me make sure I did not just leave you like this. I think that's it. Hold on. 13292BU9. Yes, that's the right one. So, and then I went from there and I left that store. Well, I didn't leave that store. I just went and got a different. I was working. I left for like two weeks, y'all. I'm honest with you. I left for two, like two weeks. And I took a position at another grocery store. Well, then they called me back and they're like, hey, we need a front end cashier. Do you mind coming in at doing the seven o'clock, seven to two shift? I was like, yeah, that's perfect because my other shift didn't start till four o'clock. So I was like, you know what? I was a night manager at that other store um, and I was doing both. Hold on. Now let me go get another red and green and another white bush. Y'all are getting story time today. <laughs> So, um, at the other job, at the other store, I was actually getting paid more. So, I was like, you know what, I can do both. I was like, this is fine. One's in the evening, one's in the morning. I still have plenty of time to sleep. It wasn't, it wasn't like it was like a graveyard shift. No, it was 7 to 2, and then the other one was from 4 to 9. So, nothing major. Well, then one day, um, so I did that job. I did both of them equally um, for about, I want to say about four months, y'all. Three to four months. And um, everything was fine. And then my manager called me in and he was like, um, he always said bro. And I hated it, y'all. I hate it. <laughs> Hated when he used the word bro. He'd be like, hey, bro, I need to talk to you. And I was like, okay. I was like, hey, what's up? Um, he's like, um, so are you still working for that other store? And I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, well, someone had said you were, but we didn't know you were. And, well, the store owners um, don't. Um, but, y'all, remember, I was, I was young. Like, this is like when I'm... 20 21 so this was a long like this was how old am i gonna be this was 13 years ago yeah i mean 14 hour workday but y'all when you're young and you love money you're like yes i'm gonna do anything i can um so he was like well um you kind of have to make a decision of who you who you want to work with or what company you want to stay with and so i was like can i can i think about it for a little bit like about a week and he's like, yeah, he's like, um, he's like, just, just let me know. Well, ultimately, y'all, that other store was still paying me more. So, <laughs> I opted and I told him about a week later, I was like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick with the other store. He's like, okay, bro. He's like, he's like, I kind of wish you would stay here. And I was like, I know, I was like, but they're paying me more. And he wasn't offering me more money. Y'all, he wasn't, he wasn't offering me any of that. So, yeah, story time. Y'all, this is a long story time. So, then from there, I worked at that store, and I was in charge of, I was a night manager, and I was also, um, yeah, it was a conflict of interest, of course, um, but there were two, both different companies, two different things, um, but I was also in charge of the scanning office there, so I was also in charge of pricing. And, um, you know, of course, like when you're, when you're young, like I said, and you, you really don't, when you don't know any better, but you're trying to, you know, make enough money and support your 
habits, of course, like back then, y'all, I'm not even gonna lie. I loved to go out and have a good time back in the day, y'all. Believe it or not, I loved to hang out with my friends. We always had parties. So, of course, um, that's where some of my money went, y'all. Of course, partying and having fun and hanging out. But um, before we do that, y'all, I need to add some ribbon tails right in here. So I'm going to add a few ribbon tails. So I'm going to choose some of my ribbons that I have. And they're going to be 13 inches as well. Um, so, you know, I, y'all, like, who in their right mind, like, now I think about it, I'm like, Jesus, Jordan. <laughs> One time I went to, this was for the 4th of July, y'all, and we had all pitched in. And I alone spent $350 at the fireworks stand. Okay, 300, so we bought like $700 worth of fireworks that day. Yeah, you know, young and dumb. On top of that, we also bought adult beverages. And so, like my, my paychecks were like, I would get them like, yay, and then they'd be like, no, nah, Monday they were gone. So, that's why I had taken that other dollar. I was like, well, heck, if I can still make money at this one, we're good. But so, ultimately what happened was um, I worked there for a few months, and unfortunately my dad got really, really sick. Y'all, he was in um, ICU for six weeks. Um... And then he was in CCU for like another two weeks. And then about another two weeks, he was in um, he was in a regular room in the hospital. So that was about, that was what, like th maybe about a total of three months, two months. And I had to leave that other job. And I went back to the grocery store that I was working at. I was like, hey, I was like, I know I left. I was like, but is there any way you can give me like a second chance? And he was, they were like, you know what, bro? Because he always said that, y'all. It's always stuck with me. He's always said, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh, he's like, I don't have any positions available. But try the other store. We had, they had just taken over that other store. And I was like, okay, I'll try the other one. Well, what I did was I went in and like I was already trained. Like I already knew how to do the scanning office. I already knew how to be a stalker. I already knew how to be a cashier. So um, the manager was like, you know what? He's like, I have a position available. So you know, things were to where I could not be traveling the 30 minutes anymore. Like if I, I couldn't do that if my mom needed me, right? Like if I need, if I needed to leave, I needed to find a place where, and I did let them know, I was like, y'all, I need to find a job that's a little bit closer because if I need to leave, I, I don't want to waste time driving those extra 30 minutes, honestly. That's 30 minutes too long, right? So um, I ended up working at this other grocery store, which was run by the same family. Um, so it wasn't like, it's like I just let, I... I switched from one apartment to the next one, okay? <laughs> Basically. Uh, and then I just moved up from there. I went from cashier, and then they would kind of use me as a filler here and there. And I love that. I I love y'all, I loved my job. I I'm not even gonna say I didn't love my job. I did love my job. I love seeing people every single day, getting to talk with people. Um, and then his son, who was the produce manager at the time. Yeah, this is I'm yeah. I love that there's 157 of y'all watching me make this read and we're having this lovely story time. His son at the time um was burning the candle at both ends as well. Uh he took a job with UPS and when you I guess when he started with UPS it was kind of like he would have to be like the sorter in the morning. So he would have to sort all the packages into the trucks. So I took that, I was working in the produce, they're like, do you want to work in the produce department? 
I was like, sure. I was like, I've never worked in the pro. The only department, y'all, the I, that I did not want to work in, y'all, was the meat market. I did not want to work in the meat market. That was like a no-go for me. Um, that was non-negotiable. I was like, mm -mm, find somebody else to do it. <laughs> I was like, that is not going to be a part of my journey. I would do any other thing. Like I would, I would, I had no problem working frozen or dairy or produce. Um, so then his son got hired on full time at UPS. So um, he couldn't do the produce manager job anymore. So they're like, would you like to be the produce manager? Um, and really, actually, like they never asked me. They kind of just like threw me into the produce department that I was the produce manager. So I winged it um, and I learned a lot. So that was good. But and then so with the produce manager position came the um, floral department. And that's one department I really, really loved. I put a lot of heart and soul into that. So, um, yeah, but to answer the question, did I work, did I go straight from getting hired to working in the floor department? No. I worked my way up and I ended up, um, I started up as a stalker, cashier, scanning office, and then back to cashier again, and then ultimately, um, manager. A manager with no store keys. Let me just add that. I had no um, store keys. So that was nice that I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> but yeah. So that's a little bit of my life, y'all. What kind of base is it on? It is on an evergreen um, wreath. It's on an 18-inch evergreen wraith. Yeah, so I loved it. Like, I I knew how to do... You know, I knew how to do a lot of stuff. Like, they had me at the service desk, which used to be where the video rental department is, was, but that was also where um, they did Western Union. So, yeah, I, I was trained in a lot of uh, aspects of the grocery store. The only one I was not trained in was meat market, but I was... They had me as a cashier, as a stalker, dairy, produce, um, floral department. Of course, I really trained myself in the floral department. Let's see. What else, y'all? Um, Western Union, service desk. Um, I, I learned a little bit of like the closing duties because um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. But um, that didn't. That I did not, I really didn't care for that part. So, um, yeah, but that's a lot of, that's a little bit about my life, y'all. And now in 2020, y'all, it's really wild to me to see my memories right now because four years ago, I was still working at the, gro I was at the grocery store, still working. Um, and all of my memories of COVID are popping up, like the, um, Excuse me, y'all. Talky talky too much. Um, so all of my like memories. There was one that I shared four years ago, and um, the Houston Livestock and Rodeo show was going on, and they canceled it. And I shared it because um, I have I had I have friends whose children deal with you know. FFA and they show animals so thankfully like our livestock show had already happened here but there were kids that you know it was their senior year of course their senior year you know doing all those things and then the pandemic happens everything shuts down there's no more school there's no more hanging out there's you know but one thing that kind of hit close to me was because y'all being in Texas we love you know, we raise animals and we teach the, they teach the kids and stuff like that. So when you make it to like a big show like that, sometimes you don't think that y'all the smallest little school or someone, if you're in like a small little town, like you don't ever think you're going to make it to the Houston livestock and rodeo show, right? 
well. So um, we're going to add these in, y'all. I want to kind of alternate these as well. So I've got four pieces, and I've got four pieces of... Um, 60919 so you know they, it was a post where they were showing the kids like in tears you know it was like their senior year they they were really banking hoping on this to get that grand champion and reserve grand champion and of course um everything just shut down but it's really wild to me i'm like that was four years ago y'all and us being a small town you know we didn't see a lot of the major effects of covid until about maybe six months like four or five months after the shutdown right you know there was a case here and a case there but um then in that june of 2020 y'all it just it took off here like bad so it's oh it's wild to me to see that pop up in my memories. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was four years ago. So, of course, March through um, September happened of 2020 for me. And then um, kind of good, excuse me, living my best life, you know. Making wreaths silently, not not posting videos, not doing lives. Um, and that's actually what the part I'm getting to, Peggy. So Peggy asked, when did you when did you become a creative coach for Deco? So um September of 2020, I you know, just minding my own business and I get a picture and a message. From the Damon Oates, y'all. Y'all know Damon Oates is the founder of Deco Exchange. And he's actually my boss. He's also a really great friend. We've known each other for, for years. Um, so, in 2020, in September 2020, he reached out to me. And, y'all, I almost said no. I was like, mm, I don't think that's a part of my journey. I don't want to do those. <laughs> Yeah, I used to do like sped up videos, y'all, and they were usually like right behind me where you really couldn't see my face. Um, I struggle with that a lot, y'all. Like, are people going to like me? Are they not going to like me? You know, whatever. Now I'm like, whatever. If they don't like me, who cares? Um, I mean, I still care a little bit, but not as much as I used to. So I would do sped up videos and, you know, he talked to me. He's like, would you like to be... Um, a creative coach for me and like I almost said no I was like mm, I don't know about all that he kind of laid out the things and I was like mm, I don't know about all that like I did I went through all the what ifs y'all I did all the what ifs I was like um what if I had to edit videos and all of this stuff y'all I did I, I did all the crazy stuff y'all I was like mm -mm, nope not gonna happen not a part of my journey I just wanted to mind my own business stay here um, but ultimately in September of 2020, I'm going to bring in the geranium bush now, y'all. And I'm going to cut this one in half. So in September of 2020, I got a nice little, um, I think it was like a FaceTime. I don't remember if it was a FaceTime or one of those like Facebook message calls. And it was Damon Oates. And he had Mel and Jackie at the warehouse. Because they were actually helping him um, list his stuff on Etsy, y'all. He had piles and piles of stuff that wasn't on his Etsy. So, yeah, when he gives me credit about his Etsy, I'm like, mm, about my Etsy, I'm like, mm-hmm, sir. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. So, um, it was a picture that they sent, and his porch was decorated for fall. And it was him, Jackie, and Mel. And they're like, this could be you. And I said yes, and I was like, but we can't say anything until after homecoming season. So I'm going to come in with this geranium, y'all. And again, in this, about the same spot as one of the greeneries. I'm adding that in. So, yeah. That's how I became a creative coach.
Yeah, yeah, he, so he was trying to get me to do lives, and I was like, nope. Nope. Mm -mm, nope. The very first Wreath Makers live was in Fort Worth. And I remember him and a few others. They're like, Jordan, you should be doing lives. You're so talented. I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I, No, I, I used to be in the spot where I would, I wanted to do this. But I wanted to do it on like my own terms, right? Like if I wanted to stay up late and make a wreath, I would. I didn't want to be on a schedule. Um and things like that. But now look at me. And yes, believe it or not, y'all, I was quiet. I was a quiet, shy little boy. And now look at me, I can't keep I, you can't keep me you can't make me shut my mouth up, y'all. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so things are just wild now. And, um, I did that for a while. I did creative coaching and worked at the grocery store at the same time. Y'all, because it was, um, I didn't want to leave my job. Now, if you, what a lot of people don't know about this is when I worked at the grocery store, y'all, I got free health care. So, free health insurance is a big thing y'all it's something that i didn't have to pay for so the store would pay for it um and so of course that helped a lot tremendously but um you know that was a big thing i was like i don't want to quit because i do have the free health care um and then you know, 2021 rolls around and in January of 2021, even though like I, I had just started out as a creative coach, we had done that workshop, um, things are going pretty good and it's like I was doing both of the both jobs at the same time, the grocery store, being a produce manager um all the things right so adding in these geraniums and well lo and behold um that february um i did valentine's day and my floral department which i rocked it of course um and then i did mother's day well we had a workshop, and they, the manager and I did not did not see eye to eye um, anymore. So I didn't want to leave, but time came to where I got offered something better, and I was like, "Well, I can't do both now." How did I learn to do floor? Um, actually. The platform that you're on right now commenting helped me a lot y'all i um learned a lot from watching youtube videos i learned a lot from watching youtube videos from other creators and teachers and florists and i would i remember some of the very first videos i saw were how to make a dozen roses like i didn't know how to do that then i was like how do i i don't know how to arrange a dozen roses so I learned, and um, the rest is kind of history. And then I remember one of my like second or third videos was like, "How do I make a corsage?" Like that was like, um, I was like, "How do I make a corsage?" Cause I needed to learn how, cause prom season was coming up. Y'all, I was like, I, people were like, do you know? I was like, my very first year that I did, I was like, no, I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know how to make them. Um, they're like, oh, okay, so I would send it to the flower shop, and I was like, then I realized I was like, that's a lot of money just walking away from my floral department, y'all. Jordan, figure it out. <laughs> so I did, and I was actually, I ended up being like one of the number one, um, highly recommended florist for corsages for prom. In the area, like I had a lot of schools around me buy corsages because I would do 
uh, a couples deal like if you're if you buy the corsage you're gonna get this at a discount which normally was the boutonniere so um yeah but um september 2021 came and it was labor day week well so about may came after that june came and it just it was time for me to go it, i i I knew deep down inside I didn't want to, but I I couldn't turn down an opportunity that came up. And so I was like, you know what? It's time for me to go. Um, I had written out my two weeks notice, y'all. And I had it sitting there for about two weeks. Almost a month, actually. And so, yeah. That's how Jordan left the grocery store. I had it sitting there for a little bit. Because I wasn't quite ready to commit to leaving yet. I was going to try and stick it out. But things just weren't right. And well, now as you know, they say the rest is history. Now look at me. You can't shut me up. I'm always chatty Cathy now. On here for an hour and a half making a read story time. <laughs> um, but I don't think I would change anything, y'all. I really wouldn't. So here we go. Y'all, this is our wreath. Look how pretty this is. So I'm gonna show y'all like I have greenery all throughout. Let's see the ribbon tails. Um, one question I did see yesterday that was after the live was why do you put all that stuff on there, all the mesh on there if you're gonna cover it up? Okay, well, y'all. It's the same way you put a pair of underwear on in the morning or your bra on, right? You need that support. So that mesh is a good support system, right? We always, like, I know it probably sounds weird or funny that I look at it and I, I automatically just think, like, it's like a pair of underwear. But it's really um, quite essentially what it is for your wreath. I'm trying to see. My red geranium's really pretty. I love this show. I love how this came out. So yeah, that's why I add all the the florals and the picks and everything. Okay. But really pretty um, everyday wreath. This one can kind of last you throughout the summer. Not a lot. I kind of, I almost thought about adding some of this greenery in there, but I think it might be a little too bright. Yeah. Okay. But y'all, that's all I have for y'all. That's it. This one is being a little ornery right now. I need to fix that. There we go. It's a little. So we used um, like one and a half bush of the BU9 bush. We did a one and a half of that one. I used two. Um, I used a total of four 609 19s and then three geranium stems. The geranium stem. I can get you all the skew on the geranium stem. It is, where are you? There you are. So we did have these at Deco, but we did sell out. Y'all, we've sold out of all the geraniums at Deco. I'll tell y'all. Um, Thank y'all. Because <laughs> geraniums were on my list. And I'm glad, like, maybe this year I'll be able to order some more geraniums. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Um, The geranium spray, geranium berry fern spray was 62695. SP28. Yep. So, um, y'all, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for letting me share a little bit of my story with y'all. I know it was probably like, oh my gosh, is he going to be quiet anytime soon? Can we get on with the wreath? But, um, kind of just showing y'all that I too am a real person. You know, we, we go through a lot of ups and downs in our lives. So, um, yeah. Showing y'all 
how kind of like my journey has been. Okay. So y'all definitely thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget um, to subscribe to the channel. There's new videos posted. Now when I say new videos, a lot of them are reposts of older videos that we've done here on YouTube or on the Facebook page. But um, definitely check those out. The replays are always available of the lives. They're always available here on YouTube as well. Um, you can hit that little live section and you'll see all the replays. Um, don't forget, um, Parker has also started releasing more and more podcasts. So definitely give that a listen. Um, I did see someone said that on your Android phone, you do need to, I think you have to listen to it through Spotify, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but if you are on, if you have an Apple device, uh, there is a podcast app already in there. So I do know he's trying to get in like the top, like five or 10, I can't remember, uh, podcasts, listens podcasts. So yeah, um, definitely check it out y'all. But y'all have a good, let me kind of zoom this out, y'all, just a little bit so y'all can kind of end with a really nice, pretty shot of it. Um, it's really pretty, y'all. I love that. That came out so pretty. Okay. But y'all, that's all I have for y'all. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see y'all next time. Okay. Bye, y'all.